currently, according to this, we're streaming live. I'm hoping we are. Um, just in case you don't know, I'm Daniel. I'm uh, from Tenerife First Excursions. And um, the reason why we've come on live is I brought um, Kieran from Night Skies. He um, runs a tour that brings people up to do a bit of stargazing up on the mountain. And um, he's going to tell you a bit about that in a few minutes. We're just going to say hello to him first. How are you, Kieran? How's the, uh, how's the lock? down going take two by the way because we already asked this question already. <laughs> <laughs> we got shut off so uh how's it going I've been from here this time eh? yeah, uh yeah no, to be fair we're doing all right uh just trying to keep our spirits up really uh hundreds of games of cards uh, and i'm basically just waiting for the next milk to come around but uh <laughs> and uh what what games have you, just out of interest what games have you been playing um uh during this time now Remember, this is a clean station, Kieran. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, my missus, she's a, a bit of a card shark, so she's been thrashing me at Jim Rummy and Uno. Um, but she brought herself a Mega Drive Mini recently, so uh, I've been thrashing her back at Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, so, man, I've uh, played Sonic in ages. What a great uh, game. Nor did I, I know. She yeah, got this game when she'd been ill last year, and uh, the, sort of while she was in recovery and that. And uh, it's pretty amazing. I've completed Streets of Rage 2, which I was pleased about. Just, I can't remember. I don't remember that. I tell you, I played Sonic and that was it. And then we, um, I, I had a Super Nintendo, it was. So it was Super Mario Brothers and Street Fighter. Yeah, yeah. Remember yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 I remember game. that. Yeah. Good game. So, yeah, so really why we got you on here is obviously um we work a lot together um yeah. and I've, I've got lots of great feedback from your tour and um people have always enjoyed it and come back and, and come back with an amazing experience and more knowledge than they had before they left so what would be really cool is if you could tell people listening right now a little bit about the tour and what happens yeah okay no problem uh well i mean i'm one of the lucky people i'm in the position where i'm doing my hobby for my living um, so obviously I love what I do and so does Craig that works with me. So hopefully that comes across and that's why we get the good reviews coming back. Uh, but we try and make our excursion fun as well as informative. I'm the sciencey guy, Craig, he, he likes a bit of a joke. Um, but basically the tour is we pick people up in our little mini buses. We only do small groups of eight uh, to a van, so maximum 16 people on the tour, uh, which is how we like it. It's a bit more like a family friendly thing sort of excursion um and we'll go up for a canary meal on the way up the mountain stopping at a little restaurant called casa sira uh up in chio um and uh we'll have a free course dinner up there canary meal and a few drinks uh before going up for a sunset above what we call the sea of clouds so although quite often you'll look at the mountain there'll be real big black dark clouds hanging around uh, and if you was in the UK, you'd be convinced it was about to pelt it down with rain. Uh, we get above them, uh, and we're looking out then over the top of the clouds to El Hierro, La Gomera, and uh, La Palma. Um, and watch an amazing sunset from up there with a glass of cava. Um, and afterwards, Craig will take a few pictures for everyone. Um, and we always post them on our Facebook site. Uh, anyone that don't have Facebook, obviously we email them too or send them the link on Google Photos. Because uh, we're one of them rare tours that gives the photos away. I know a lot of them here, they try and make money out of everything, wouldn't they? But uh, that, that's what we do. We we consider that if people have paid for the tour, they've paid for the whole thing and the photos are included in that. Especially when you're at something like a sunset, we get a lot of uh, proposals and things like that there. Um, and it's mem people are making memories with us, not just having an excursion. Um, but after the sunset, when it starts to get dark, we'll make our way up into the National Park a bit further in. Uh, and I'll get the telescope out. We've got a professional Celestron eight and a half inch telescope. Um, and I'll do a laser guided tour of the stars. And Craig, our telescope technician, he'll show you the stuff I'm talking about through the telescope. So you actually get the, the visual as well as just me rabbiting on. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I say, I'm doing my hobby for a living. So I couldn't really be in a better place. Excellent. I mean, for, for me, obviously, um, I've done the excursion with you guys. And I found it very informative, really enjoyable. It's beautiful up there. I, I mean, it's for me, it's one of the highlights of this island is is Tahiti, and also at night time, you know. And um, not only that, you know, you make jokes with everything you talk about. Um, and I'd never seen 
the stars um, through a telescope before until I've been on this tour and to see it again obviously and and I think I think you, you said on the tour it's one of the top three places in the world to actually see the stars and, and yeah, you know that part where you go above the clouds I mean that anytime I do it anytime I even drive up above the clouds and look down on them it's phenomenal like it's it's something you'll never forget for the rest of your life in my opinion you know yeah I think that whole evening really uh you know, we go for our meal, but then when, once we start driving up from there, um, you're sometimes driving through the clouds. Obviously, it's different every night for, for us as well. It keeps us interested. Uh, but we know it's 99% of the time you get some sort of spectacular sunset up there. Um, and you, like you say, the first time some people have ever been looking down on the clouds when they're not yeah. in an aeroplane, you know. Um, and then after when it starts to get dark and the stars slowly coming out in order of brightness and you're seeing one pop out here and one over here um, and then it just builds and builds and builds until you get to astronomical darkness which is like a good hour after the sunset and you can see the whole thing stretched out before you uh, I mean obviously we're all in lockdown here at the moment same as uh, most places in the world uh, and only last night I couldn't sleep so I got up come out had a look at beautiful clear skies uh even from down here um on the coast where i live and i was uh, watching some of the meteor shower there is meteor showers on at the moment oh, nice. um and then i even it was about four o'clock in the morning so i don't think my neighbors were too impressed but i actually set up the telescope on my balcony <laughs> uh because for the first time this year i could see the planets jupiter saturn and mars just before sunrise uh and i haven't seen them for about seven months now so Excellent, excellent. And food-wise, so, you know, I know it's not a major part of the tour. My but favourite subject. If, <laughs> and if, the, if, if someone's gone along, you know, what can they expect food-wise at the, at the restaurant? Uh, well, obviously, it's a, a Canarian meal. Um, a lot of people mistake Canarian for Spanish and expecting paella or something like that, but we're quite clear it's not Spanish. It is a Canarian restaurant run by Canarians. Uh, and they've been on the island for... Uh, uh, running restaurants on the island. I think they had one in Las Americas for about 17 years uh, and they've had where they are now for over 14 years. Wow. Uh, but the meals would give an option when people get in the bus and we'll message them the uh, the meal plans for everyone uh, so it's ready for when we get up there. But usually it's a starter of a homemade soup, a uh, canary and soup uh, or a mixed salad. Uh, and then main meals are chicken, uh, pork or a wild grilled canary and mushroom, which is literally just a giant uh, mushroom the size of a plate uh, that's picked from the northern forest actually hand picked and the guy delivers it down to the restaurant my missus absolutely loves it she is a vegetarian herself um, she even asked me to bring some home for her quite often <laughs> I'd say uh, when you bring them home you're in the good books in... yeah, sorry? I'd say when you bring them home you're in the good books oh yes 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 a few ticks in the plus column don't hurt do they so. <laughs> exactly exactly and if you were to say like the top three highlights of your of your excursion or experience, what would you say they would be? The top three highlights. Aside from yourself, obviously. For it, sorry. I said asides from yourself, obviously. Oh, aside from myself. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, no, I'd say obviously the sunset. It's amazing going up, watching that sunset. Uh, obviously, people that are here on holiday see great sunsets from the coast. But to be able to see it from up above the clouds uh, is something else. Um, and then for me, the, the general uh, stargazing, just what you can actually see with your own eyes, you know, certain times of year you're seeing the Milky Way stretching across above your head. Um, and, you know, the amount of people that come on our tour and say to me, everyone knows there's stars there, but they haven't seen so many stars before in their lives, you know? Yeah. Uh, and the fact that that's... You know, it can be kids right up to pensioners doing this tour um, and they still say the same thing, you know, they're amazed by it. Uh, but my highlight for the tour, my main one has to be viewing planets. Yeah. And, yeah, and does, Obviously you were saying, does viewing the planets happen on, like, I, when I was there, I obviously got a chance, but does viewing the planets happen often? Uh, viewing the planets, it, obviously it depends, um, yeah. but usually we were saying planetary wise you're going to be looking the summer months okay. so late spring through to late summer is the best time to see the planets because you're going to be seeing jupiter 
Um, and you can see the, the bands around Jupiter and the four Galilean moons around it. Um, and then you can, we're looking at Saturn as well at that time of year. And you can actually see the rings around Saturn. Um, even sometimes you'll be able to see the Cassini division, which is the largest gap between the rings. Uh, Craig quite often jokes that it, it, it's so real, it doesn't look real. Um, because obviously they're just reflecting our sunlight, the planets obviously not producing their own light. And Saturn, you'd have to see it to believe it, but it just looks like a 1980s video game or something. Um, but yeah, the planets for me are, are a major highlight. And as well as something that most people that come on our tour will have an idea in their head what it should look like. Uh, they're interested, obviously, when I talk about some obscure nebula that they've never heard of, and we'll show them it through the scope. But they don't know what it's supposed to look like anyway. When you can see a planet, we all know, even children know what planets look like. So, yeah, that's what I like. So, just out of interest, give us one interesting fact about, I don't know, a star or something that, because I, I know there was stuff on the tour, I was just like, seriously. And I was like, very impressed <laughs> with the knowledge. So, on, on this particular chat, give us one that you would say would be interesting, even that's happening. Okay, now. well. Uh, like I say, I was up the other morning early uh, looking at the stars. Um, and from here in Tenerife, we're actually really lucky. We can see the whole of the Scorpion, the, the Scorpio uh, star sign. I uh, can't see it all from the UK. We can see the whole body and the stinger. We've got two little stars on the end called the cat's eyes. Uh, and there's a real nice star in the middle called Antares. Nice. Uh, and it's actually a, what we call a super red giant. Uh, quite often it gets mistaken for Mars, and if you're up early enough in the morning, don't know how early you get up, uh, <laughs> you, you can see why, you can compare the two. Mars will be uh, over to the left as you're looking at the sky, and then Terry's will be within the Scorpion. Um, but it's what we call a super red giant, and uh, I believe it's about 900 light years away from us, uh, from Earth. Um, it looks like a tiny little red dot in the sky. It's actually so big, if you was to fly around its circumference in an aeroplane at 550 miles per hour, it'd take you over 290 years to do one lap of it. Wow. Yeah. That's it's giant moments. Hey, you want a good lunch, would you? <laughs> <laughs> so, another question for you. For someone who's, you know, in their hotel, you're going to pick them up, they're going to go on the tour, what would you say the kind of most important things they need to bring with them for, for the tour? Uh, well, personally, I'd recommend that they dress warm. Yeah. Uh, I know it can be 25 even in the winter down on the coast here, uh, but it gets cold up there at night. Uh, in the summer, not so cold, uh, but you're still going to want a jumper or jacket. Personally, I wear the, the jeans all year round up there, um, but maybe I've been here too long and uh, got used to the heat but uh, definitely warm clothes I would say. We do provide uh, padded jackets for anyone because uh, it's not usually the first thing you think of packing when you come in on holiday at Tenerife is it warm clothes um, but generally someone's got something a pair of trousers or a jumper just something to keep the chill off. Excellent so but if if for example they've only packed a t-shirt shorts and some flip-flops for their for their beach holiday and all of a sudden they decide i want to go to the mountain i want to see the stars you can provide them with some warm clothes when they get up there yeah we've got our big padded jackets and stuff like that yeah we can so, provide that if that don't work the carver and a bit of hot chocolate at the end of the night might help, but, uh, <laughs> i have to say that was one of the highlights for me i was getting chilly up there and the next thing you, you came out with a nice cup of hot chocolate very very impressive <laughs> that. that was nice that that finished the night off nicely so, <laughs> excellent, Kieran. Look, thanks a million for coming on and talking about it. No, no. Everyone, if you want to book with this, obviously we're in a situation that we're in lockdown at the moment. We're not able to work. Um, so we're trying the best to get our businesses out there and we look forward to welcoming you back here on the island. You can book with us these tours on our website, uh, www.tenerifefirstexcursions.com. You can also book it through Facebook here by messaging us or you can come to one of our shops in the south of Tenerife. And uh, we look forward to seeing you here soon. And hopefully we can send you with Kieran up to see the stars. Thanks very much again, Kieran. And uh, no, thank you. Keep safe, my friend. And you, mate.